Good evening, my name is Joseph Sippitz here for the St. Joseph County Public Library. Time for another Saturday Night Story. And um, tonight I'll be reading from The Tricky Art of Coexisting by Sandy Toxvig, um, a person who you may possibly know from the Great British Bake Off um, or perhaps elsewhere. But um, with uh, our country sort of taking tentative steps and reopening, it seems like a little etiquette um, guide would be an appropriate use of our time here. So let's do this. Um, I'll be reading from a chapter called Dinner Parties, Being the Guest. <clears throat> Refusing an Invitation. The American author William Faulkner once declined an invitation to dinner at the White House with the words, why, that's a hundred miles away. That's a long way to go for dinner. We may not have all that kind of courage, but everyone is entitled to turn down an invitation if they wish. Your time is your own, but the worst thing is to give a lot of excuses. Saying, that would have been lovely, but I'm afraid I can't, or maybe some other time, is sufficient. If the host insists on making another date, then you need to think generally about your boundaries with people. If you are going to turn someone down, do it quickly so they can replace you with someone else. Accepting an invitation. The basic rule is accept speedily and in the same manner of the invitation was extended. So if the invite comes via email, then reply via email and so on. Give your host plenty of notice if you have particular dietary problems. It seems quite the fashion these days to have one kind of food allergy or another. Some of them can be very trying for all concerned. If you are generally having a problem with certain foods or are devoted to a particular eating regime, let your host have plenty of time to prepare something for you. The vegan who has failed to mention their utter devotion to vegetables before a meal is served is not going to be popular when the host puts forth their best leg of lamb. Now, if you have a medical problem with a certain food, it's also worth mentioning. If you have so many food issues that any meal is a nightmare, you might want to consider staying at home. It is said that King Louis XIV once had a very bad toothache. His dentist decided to solve this by pulling out the offending tooth and in the process damaged the king's upper jaw and palate. Ever after, Louis struggled with soup, finding that whatever he drank it, it came out of his nose. Anyone inviting the French king to supper might have done well to leave soup off the menu, and he would have been polite enough to have mentioned it beforehand. Canceling at the last minute. Don't. Unexpectedly bringing a friend. Again, don't. Having said that, I was a friend who was brought unexpectedly to dinner, and I am now married to the person who was cooking that night. When to arrive. It is best, or it is up to the host to be clear what time guests should arrive, but it's up to the guests not to be so early that they risk seeing the host in his underpants. Be on time, at least within 15 minutes of the appointed hour. Being fashionably late is just annoying and not at all fashionable. If you are going to be late more than 15 minutes, call and say so. Arrive clean and neat. What to bring. Always bring your host, or always ask your host if there is something you can bring. I was once invited to a dinner at comedian Jeremy Hardy's house, and so I texted to see what if he wanted me to bring anything. He texted back in a single word, dinner. Most hosts will reply, just bring yourselves. But what they actually mean is just bring yourself in a decent bottle of wine. The usual gift is something that you that won't last, but is welcome. If you don't drink, bring chocolates. Flowers can be annoying to the host if the host has to rummage around the house to get sink for a vase. Think about the host. Flowers, asthma, chocolate. Diabetic, wine, recently held for drunk driving, which was in all the papers, <clears throat> consider. Being in someone's home. When you are and are not welcome is easy. Where you are and are not is wel um, welcome is easy. It's the old um, thresholds again. In general, they are easy to spot and they tend to um, be actual thresholds. Uh, don't go in the front door unless invited. 
Don't go into someone's bedroom unless you know them very well indeed. Don't use the bathroom without asking, and when you do, don't open the cabinets. This is not this is a dinner invitation, not a free for all. Seating plan. Don't take a seat unless indicated by the host. Family members sometimes have favorite seats at home and may feel odd even in a round table if you sit in their place. It is quite likely that you won't be seated next to your partner, and that is fine, as the whole point of dining out is to meet other people, not to have the same conversation you would have at home. If you don't like it, stay at home. Sit down with the least amount of fuss. In Lou the Fourteenth's court, you remember you're learning about him, rules about everything, terrible soup eater. There was a particular method for a gentleman to sit down. First, he had to slide his left foot forward in front of his right and then put both hands on the side of his chair and lower himself gently into place. The reason was simple. If he didn't, he might split his very tight trousers. Fortunately, people are able to be a little more relaxed these days, and there are still some things to think about when in the presence of company. Eating. If you are a guest at a dinner party, and then you are probably not a child, if you have pre-warned a host about a particular dietary problem that has been catered for, then you should be able to eat whatever is put before you, however challenging. I was once served a dish of offal and ophicuts the size of a baby's head. It had never occurred to me that someone might think that this melange was suitable for a dinner party, so I hadn't mentioned it um, being something that I wouldn't want to eat. I soldiered through it and did not die. Wait for the host or hostess to start eating. There are probably They are probably exhausted from the stress of organizing the dinner and need their strength. Don't offer someone a taste of your food unless you know them extremely well and are sitting next to them. Shoving a fork full of hot, runny foods across the table is not going to be popular. Salt and pepper. Taste the food first. Have some faith in your host's ability to prepare a meal. If you do feel like you need some seasoning, don't, as it were, make a meal of it. I have a delightful friend who recently ordered a rather expensive uh, sideboard for her home, and she referred to as a credenza, which is, of course, the correct term. What she did not know is that the word comes from the Italian for belief. In the 16th century, it referred to pre-tasting food and drink, um, by a servant to make sure the food was not about to be poisoned. Eventually, the word came to describe a piece of furniture, thus held that the food before it uh, was finally served. If pre-tasting is necessary in someone's home, you might want to reconsider your friendship. Speed of eating. <clears throat> to consume whole pieces of food is in a gulp is for storks and buffoons. Erasmus from... 1530. Tricky. Try to follow the pace of the host. Too slow and people will think you don't like their food. Too fast and you are clearly afraid that you are not going to get enough. Second helpings. Wait to be asked. Don't just take. Clearing the plates. If it is a dinner party in someone's house, then it is nice to offer but expect to be refused. Saying thank you. Your host has hopefully made an effort, and it is a good to be grateful. Even if they have made no effort at all, it's kind to pretend that they have and that you are grateful. No Dane would have ever leave the family table without saying, Take for mad, thank you for the dinner, uh, to which the host would reply, Welkenswollen, well, may it be well, may it well it become you. There are, these days, a further thanks by text is nice, although a handwritten one is classy. Ideally, it needs to be done the next day. Leaving. A bit like being a comedian, timing is everything. The trick is not to leave too late or too early. Sometimes the moment to leave is very clear. I once attended a military dinner where coffee was served after the meal in the drawing room. In, the general, in charge, and his wife drank there's standing up, and it was clear that no one was to make themselves comfortable. We all departed shortly afterwards, although no one said a word about the time. 
The method would be, no doubt, look odd in ordinary home, but there are easy clues the host might be might give to indicate the time is up. It's so nice that you for you to come. I have so enjoyed this evening. We must see you again, etc. All suggest that the pleasure is now over. The most important thing to do is to be subtle about the hour. Don't check your watch or your phone at the dinner table. People will think you are bored. Don't take forever over. Goodbye. Once you have indicated you are going to go, don't start a new anecdote. I was once at a dinner with... See what I mean? Anyways, I hope this is helpful. Good night.